morning, everybody. Cool, good to see you all, day 25. Happy Friday. So we're gonna get right into our practice today. Just um, a quick explanation on sort of like what we've covered so far. Essentially what we've covered is a bunch of different ratios, right? So we did, we started with a one to one to one to one ratio, and then we boosted the intensity to a one to 1.5, and then we increased the intensity yet again to a one to two. And now we're at the sort of like final expression, maximum intensity, there's no more counting. You're just uh, approaching every segment of the technique and, and trying to spend as much time within that segment as possible. And so the best way I found to, to survive the intensity of like a maximum expression is to interact with every segment of the breath, right? The puraka, the inhale, the antar kumbhaka, the internal retention, the rechaka, the exhale, and the baya kumbhaka, the external retention, as if it was its own little meditation. And so from way back in the beginning, every breath in comes with this surge of one, you know, nutrition, right, oxygen, so it feels good in that respect, but also a surge in confidence because it triggers the sympathetic nervous system. So if you want to, and I would encourage you to do this, fixate on that. That is called shakti in Sanskrit. And so every breath in is there to reinvigorate your willpower to participate as powerfully as you can. And then the top retention, both retentions facilitate a sense of presence and connection. And if you mobilize that physiological presence and focus on the tingling and buzzing and your visualization, uh, the retentions themselves should become less extreme and less dramatic. And then the exhale, the, the puraka or the rechaka, uh, it's, it's, there come, it comes with relief because you're expelling uh, you know, the cloud of CO2 that's built up because of the top retention. And so you just want to interact. The inhale is invigorating, both retentions are clarifying, and then the exhale is also sort of like uh, pacifying. Every time you exhale, the parasympathetic nervous system activates. And so you have that sort of advice to work with. Again, visualization is super important. And then, you know, as you take this practice with you after this challenge is over, if you take it with you, you don't have to practice at maximum intensity. This can be very extreme. It might not be everyone's cup of tea, but you've worked through a slew of ratios that, you know, might, might be more suitable to you at any given time. Uh, cool, and so with that, Let's get started. Strong seated position. We're gonna spend a little time with Duke, a little time embracing the fact that there is insecurity and stress and you know life builds up and the towers that we build you know often crumble. This reality of entropy, this reality of challenge. But the meditative thought within that is that all sense of grief, all sense of suffering is misperception on the part of the individual. Life is always divine. Life is always supremely good. And we just have to orient ourselves physiologically, neuro neurologically, and psychologically to perceive it that way. That is the great dance. That is the great choreography of this practice. Stillness helps us with that. Our breath work helps us with that. And our philosophies help us with that. So just a few breaths here. There is dukkha, there is suffering, but I know it is the misperception of my mind. And if I can get past my mind, I will see things more clearly. Slow down your breath. And let's tap into the meditative nature of every breath in, puraka, every breath out, rechaka. Every inhale is euphoric and it comes with a sense of exhilaration and confidence. That's due to both the replenishing of oxygen, and the sparking of your sympathetic nervous system. So you just feel that every breath in, it's there for you.
and every breath out comes with a complementary experience. A similar sense of physical satisfaction as you expel CO2, so that feels good. A physical means of balancing the chemistry in the blood. But also this emotional sense of tranquility. That's your parasympathetic nervous system. Also interesting to notice, when you are breathing normally, there is a spontaneous, albeit brief, kumbhaka. Every time you inhale, at the top of the inhale, the breath starts to slow as the lungs fill, and there is a retention. And as you exhale, and the lungs start to empty, there is a retention. Just a couple more breaths here, tuning in to each segment of the breath, noticing these natural occurrences of kumbhaka. The world is somewhere else. You are internalizing your mind. For many reasons, for unknown reasons, for one reason. That's your personal purpose. Let's start our technique. Kumbhaka, maximum intensity. Inhale as slowly as you can. Hold your breath as long as you can. Exhale as slowly as you can. Hold your breath as long as you can. If you want more intensity, work with your bandhas. Push your belly out when the lungs are full. Pull your belly in when the lungs are empty. Every segment of the breath is its own meditation. Use visual visualizations to repress the amygdala, to repress that panic response. We have a long time in our practice. Good work, good luck, I'll be practicing alongside you.
Three signs of success. Sweating. Trembling. And the mind-body split. Psychological levitation. You enter this flow state inside the intensity of it. So the aim philosophically is to collect tapas, to collect heat, to let the body become more acidic, to let CO2 build, to funnel blood up into the brain, to create physiological change, and then to slingshot from that distant territory back into what is regular at the end. With the breath in, arms reach up and over your head, interlace your fingers, your index fingers are pointing up to the sky, and just build your hand gesture, Shiva Mudra, the gesture of Shiva. Feel your index fingers like little steeples, and the remaining fingers gripping into the knuckle space. Try to squeeze your palms so they're both flat and symmetrical against one another. Reach the arms up, pull the arms behind the ears. Use your abdomen to lift the torso out of the hips. Your body is active. This is going to create more acidity as carbonic acid is released through your working muscles. When you need to hold, keep holding. When you are compelled to either exhale or inhale, grip through your body as if you were physically holding on to the retention. You only have a couple more minutes, one or two more rounds, full intensity. The next time you exhale, release your wrist to your knees, random finger to each thumb, eyes stay closed, breathe normally, and savor that return to what is normal. And so at this point you have collected tapas, you have collected spiritual power. Which is literally heightened acidity in the body, which naturally orients your attention into you versus out into the world. The consequence comes along with a buzzing, tingling aliveness, which is physical. Fixate on that physical buzzing called sukshma, and in that it's easier to avoid overanalysis. It's easier to avoid thinking. Do your best to only feel this and to appreciate it, to keep the world at bay. From time to time, appreciate Kaivalya.
aloneness. You have a decent amount of time here today, about eight minutes, very slow breaths, perfect, perfect, perfect stillness.
slow down your breath and refocus your attention on the physical sensations of the body, noticing at the same time you are more than likely thinking. And so we have to learn how to slide the scale into pure feeling. From here, externalize the mind. Pay attention to the world around you. And at first, this is your home, but very quickly, your intellect includes and recognizes the world itself. And in a very similar way to Duke, to acknowledging that our suffering is due to misperception, as you acknowledge the world, appreciate your limited ability to grasp its wholeness. And that while you behold as much as you can behold, you know there is more there. And to sit in front of that mystery and to acknowledge that unreachable infinity somehow bridges the gap. And that's a good feeling. Bring your hands to heart center, relax your shoulder blades down your spine. Acknowledge the sincerity of this space and that it is a unique space when you compare it to your attitude and your goals and your intentions in other spaces that occupy your time and your routine. Thumb knuckles to third eye center. Hardly touching the skin of your forehead with your thumb knuckles. Fixating on that sensation and that microscopic gap. The sensation is very similar. A buzzing, tingling aliveness. The game is the same. Replace all thinking with feeling. Enter pure focused objectivity and in that behold something different. Release your wrist to your knees, random finger to each thumb. And with a breath in, open your eyes, looking out into the space in front of you. I am no longer meditating. And through that statement, acknowledging that you were previously meditating, of course, but that that process actually took you on a journey. <laughs> 